Hi right, guys, today on Shoki Reviews, we're going to take a look at another suit from the Iron Blooded Orphans line. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bit late on this one. It's the Man Rody, which is uh, the main grunt suit of the Brewers uh, gang. <laughs> gang team, whatever you want to call them. So basically, it was uh, another mercenary team that they ran into once they got into space. And uh, if you remember seeing the Gusion before, that's where, well, where they got that. Now, tiny, tiny spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen IBO. I'll give you a second to skip over this part. Okay. This is Akihiro's little brother. Mind you, I don't remember his name off the top of my head. I don't know, something Hero. Yeah, but it's his little brother. He pilots the man Rody and was captured by the Brewers. Now, we won't really go into too much depth on the story. Let's go ahead and look at the box art. Because, you know, I really dig these IBO kits. We got the Bandai logo down here. We got a great shot of the man Rody in its turtley looking form. <laughs> now you see where the Gusion got its weird green turtle form. They basically... Uh, Took what they wanted from a man roadie and made it a Gundam. You get its cool little axe or hatchet or hammer, multi-tool more or less. You got another another man roadie here in the background. You got some of the asteroid field going on here. Here's another one hiding over here. Of course you got the great shot of his machine gun. And we'll talk about it. That is actually the very same machine gun that Gujan uh, comes with which makes sense. And then back here, of course, you get an image of the Barbatos shooting at the original Gusion. That's pretty cool. I like that. And you got the uh, obligatory IBO uh, banner there. HG Iron Blooded Orphans model Man Rody. Yay. Let's go to the bottom here. Got a cool action shot of him slicing down like that. That's actually a really neat shot. Now, one thing, and we'll point this out about at least the images, the purple really pops in these images because obviously it was painted and, you know, so it's going to look a little bit better than that. Here, of course, you they always want to show you how the shoulder joints work, so that's how the shoulders work. Um, not exactly sure what to point at there, but it has a face and a chest. And come over here, you get another shot of it flying backwards, and basically they're replicating the uh, cover art shot there. So that, that, got it? Okay. You got some weapon storage on the back here for the cool gun. You've got some thrusters back here. And we're going to talk about these guys when we get to it. And then some more thrusters down here on the legs. Got a good shot of the backside right there. Stop looking at its butt. Stop it. And then you got a display where you got your goosh in there with the man roadie. That's pretty neat. I do like that. Come to the side. Of course, it's a same thing as on the top. This is actually number nine in the series. So, like I said, I'm going back and... Kind of filling in the ones I was missing. And come over here and you got BandaiHobby.net along with Gundam Info. Come to the bottom, you get the obligatory rear and front shot. You get a little read up there on the man, Rody, and uh, whatever his name is. <laughs> I feel bad now, I don't remember his name. I mean, honestly, he's a minor character in the series, so. And you got GTakatsu.com. And you get a story right here. Of course, this is showing it fairly early on. So, Barbatos, they haven't even left Mars yet. So, that's interesting that they have that there. Of course, here you have your don't let your three-year-old stick anything in this box in their face. It will hurt. And you got the different types of plastic. Little guy in the toilet. And this, of course, was one of the cheap kits at the beginning. Only a thousand yen. You got the illustration by Koma. The background image by Saito Yoshinobu, as usual. Uh, even as a grunt suit, it's upside down. Okay, let's go ahead and build this guy.
right, guys. Now that we've got the man roadie built, let's take a look at this awesome little green machine. And I will fully admit, I thought this thing was stupid until I built it. <laughs> I don't know if it's the Gusion love in me or what. I really, really dig this little green turtley thing. It's just something about it really, really speaks to me. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the two-tone green and the big chunky armor. I don't know. I just really like this guy. And, you know, it, you know overall, it was kind of a minor character in the uh, or mobile suit in the series. But I really, really do dig this thing. Just cool. I do, I do really like that dark green aspect and, like, the very shallow head with the sort of mono eye. I don't exactly know what you call that. But, uh... I do like this. Now we can actually take a closer look at it here. Take it off the stand. And take a look at the closer details. It does come with a few stickers, including the eye sticker here. This whole little visor bit under here was black with this weird not you know three triangle sticker. Now it gave you the option. You could actually position it wherever you wanted to. You could actually either have the one that's whole, like I've got it on there, or as a black strip with the triangle separate, and you could place it wherever you wanted to. I wanted it right there. I like it. <laughs> um, did it? It didn't even have any other stickers that I can recall, other than where the eye is supposed to go. It has nothing. But we can take a look at some other details, because you know me, I always do a little bit of detail work on these guys. Of course, I panel lined it all over. Now this is actually different. This is not like a gray or a black. This is in fact a dark green panel line. I figured it would work out pretty good on top of the dark green body here. But then over here on the more sea foamy green, I used a bit of brown and also some of the green sort of intermixed. So you can see where it gets a little darker in some places. I didn't feel like weathering this one the way I did the... Uh, Gusion, but I can always go back and do that. I mean, I didn't, I didn't weather Gusion when I first built it, so I guess it's okay if I don't do it here. And then back here in this nice little strip down the back, I just painted that my favorite dark gray ever. Same thing with the inside of the little thrusters. Come down to the bottom of the feet, same thing. Just a little bit of that dark gray, and you can actually kind of see right up in there those three little boosters under the butt there. Those are also got a little bit of paint in there. Sorry, I gotta pull it off screen for just a second and if you're looking at it you can tell well actually in the light here in the review the purple does stand out more than it actually does so the camera makes it look good I do like this thing I'll go ahead and I'll pull the weapons out of the hands for the time being we'll look at those in a second let's talk articulation because this thing is fairly articulate for a big bulky so-and-so the head does have some rotation. It does run into the collar there, just like the Gusion did. It's not going to ever go all the way around. It is a standard uh, double ball joint neck, but uh, you're not getting any movement out of it. You get that little bit of side to side, which is one reason why having that other eye sticker would be cool, because you could actually position it much farther than it could really turn. Now, if we go to the shoulders, it's not like the Gundams. Not really. It's similar, but not the same. So, you can sort of see right in there that captured ball joint slash polycap does swivel just a little bit. But this ball, or polycap ball joint shoulder bit has tons of rotation. You can just go all the way around. If you move the shoulder armor, you can get it really to get some good reach, even to the point where it completely pops the shoulder out. That always happens, guys, I swear. So... I do like it. I can actually go about there. It looks like it should go farther, but it don't. Let's see here. If I do it... Okay, maybe we get a little bit more. Okay, that's about as much as shoulder will do. Because this armor does limit it. It both limit it and freeze it at the same time. And I like that you can sort of flip-flop it. So, like that. And come back in here. And it is just a little hinge for just the shoulder. It's actually got a little bit more movement than I think the Gusion does because these shoulder bits are nowhere near as big as Gusion's. And we will do the arm articulation. Really good thigh, or thigh, <laughs> bicep swivel, or rotation, so it works really good. And this guy does have double jointed elbows, although that's as far as the top joint will bend. So you can only really get 
90 degrees out of it, which is kind of silly for a double jointed elbow to only go 90 degrees. But when you've got big bulky armor, it makes sense. And then you come down here, standard IBO hand, but it's got a bit longer of a wrist. You can sort of see right in there where it would have another joint, but it doesn't. It just fakes having a joint. That's silly. Why would you fake it? Just give me the actual wrist. So this thing would have way more wrist articulation, but they don't want it to, guys. I don't know why. Now, it does have some good ab crunch. And actually, if you look in here, I can get the light to get in there just right. It's hard to see. But for the most part, it does have a very Gundam. Actually, it's closer to a Graze. It has a very Graze or Gundam-like center section right there. So I need to look into the history a little bit more to see if they found the Gusion and modified it or they modif modified these after they found the Gusion. Because there's so many similarities. I need I need to look it up. We'll come down a little. Oh wait, hold on, wait, it can rotate. It does have lots and lots of waist articulation. There you can actually see the backside. Big hollow spine for no real reason whatsoever. You can actually go all the way around with this guy. That's pretty neat. And you've got the hip skirts that completely pop out just like that these uh these poly caps don't fit in there very well they don't feel secure the snap doesn't feel super secure either but that's okay they're just the hip skirts what are they going to do and you can rotate them just a little bit i don't want to force it and you got the front flaps which do 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 do, do of course and i have those cut i do like that there's I'm guessing it's just a little forward-facing thruster. I doubt that would be an actual gun. We'll come down to these little stubby legs. And he can, in fact, do the full Jean-Claude. That looks awkward. I'm going to go ahead and put those back down. So you can do the full Jean-Claude splits. You get all the way around thigh rotation. And then you get some nice little double-jointed knees. That can actually rock back pretty far. That's actually pretty impressive. I like that. And you can roll that back up, straighten it out. Now, if you'd noticed a little bit there, this armor moved a little bit out of the way when tilting. And you can see that you get a little more exposure here on the foot. Now, this is very unique in the way of feet, at least in IBO. Uh, they're not really feet. They're basically like thrusters with some pegs around them. <laughs> so it's got the really big thrusters coming out the bottom of the feet there. Well, they do have some articulation. Let's see if I can... It can tilt that way. It can tilt that way. And you can do a little bit of that way. Uh, these are mounted on ball joints, so they do swivel just a little bit. And I got a little bit of gray paint under there. Uh, something about this thing. I mean, it is made, obviously, for space use. So the legs aren't super important. That's why you can have these little stubby, little stubby legs for flying around and slapping... Gundams around and making them feel sad about being Gundams. Wow, that's pretty. Look at that. that the green just gets me, guys. I don't know why. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. Now let's go back to the weapons since it has so few of them. Oof, I guess the paint might not still, or might not be totally dry. Alright, so we get its little hatchety hammer thing. Nope, nope. No, you focus on this. Don't focus on the thing. Okay, so. Obviously, I had to paint this thing. It was all purple, and it meant to be dark gray and silver. Eh, I've done what I can on it. It's not the best job. It was a very quick paint job. I'm not too concerned with it. And he can hold it one of two ways. You can hold it as a weird-looking hammer, which, yay. Or you can hold it as what I think is actually a thruster-powered hatchet. So this is actually a small thruster right there, if I am correct. And then we get the little gun focus, thank you. And this is the same little two-piece machine gun that Gujian comes with, except Gujian's is purple, this one is black. I didn't bother doing any kind of detail to this other than panel lining, because, well, <laughs> it's not super impressive, and it doesn't even show whether or not this thing comes in other colors. Now I can hold this too, just like it was at the beginning, but I want to show off the other little gimmick the guy got. So just like what the Gusion has, except that one flips out, this slides out. So it has a little butt tray right there that the gun can just rest. I think it's, yeah, it snaps in just barely securely, like right there. Look at that. Isn't that neat? 
Now, since we're on the back side here, we're going to talk about a problem that I have with this guy. And that is these. Well, these little the boosters on the back are meant to move. They're all just on a ball joint. Look. It is just super loose. I mean, it takes, look, no effort to even pull it off. So if I, if I don't stick it on there, I'll see, look. Exactly. Exactly the problem. It's like the ball joint just isn't right. Like, it's just not the right size. I mean, you can push it on a little harder. It doesn't really have an effect. You can push it on at a different angle. Sort of wedge it, and it's okay. Straight on, it's just really, see, look, I can't, it won't even want to stay on there. So maybe I need to tighten it up with some a little bit of super glue or some nail polish, something, just to make it a little tighter. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get his commander real quick. Slide him off to the side, and we'll bring in Mr. Gusion. That's Mr. Frog Turtle to you. Of course, he's off screen completely. Back up just a little bit here. So you can see, there's a lot of similarities. Like... Like I said, I don't know what came first, the Gusion or the Manrodi, but uh, the Brewers had a thing for green suits with purple accents and big weaponry. It is significantly smaller, you know, it doesn't have the giant leg armor, the giant shoulder armor, anything like that. So, you can see here, it would be the same basic green if I hadn't weathered the Gusion the way I did. But I like how even on the Gusion's head, it's really a callback to the Man Rody, like one way or the other. So this is like the evolved form of that. <laughs> so if they were Pokemon, Man Rody would come first and it would evolve into Gusion, I would think. So that's going to be it for the, the uh, Man Rody review from the IBO series, guys. You can go ahead and check out all of the other IBO kits I've done so far. The IBO playlist and building the display. This guy probably will not go in the main display because it's, well, it's essentially full. <laughs> but there will be a spot for him somewhere. There's a lot of side characters and stuff like that in IBO, and I'm sure I can find a home for him one way or the other. But uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this and all the other IBO kits I've built. And uh, hope you have a great day, whatever you're doing. I really enjoyed building this. I really did. It really called back a lot of this. So... Remember guys, always just keep on building.